What's going on, Wolfpack? My name is Generic Wolf. Welcome to some more Bosnia Reacts 2 Geography Now, Samoa this time. Okay, I accidentally did San Marino before Samoa, but it's not that big of a deal. Oops, it technically it's supposed to be Samoa, you know, because it's an M before San Marino, N, whatever. Uh, regardless, I have all the episodes in a watch later list. All of them are going to be done. We're going to be caught up. We're going to continue with Tuvalu, which is the country who's going to be releasing next as of me recording this on uh, November the 14th, he's going to be releasing uh, Tuvalu very soon. So we're going to be caught up. Um, there's only a few. I, he, he made an Instagram post. There's only a few, very few uh, countries left. And that's it. Geography now done. Well, then then he came back and said he's going to be redoing some of the older episodes. Like, it's not fair for Argentina and Australia, you know, major nations to have such short episodes and very little information. While countries like even uh, freaking Samoa are longer. 23 minutes. This video is 23 minutes long. Even longer than that. So, yeah, I definitely agree with him. He should go back and uh, redo those. So, it's going to be geography now for years to come, which is great. Now, don't get Samoa confused with American Samoa. You can guess. What, what country American Samoa is a part of. Uh, this was known as Western Samoa up until 1997, when it changed its name to just Samoa. Uh, American Samoa is part of the you know Samoan I island chain, but American Samoa is was known for its like whaling industry or something, and the Americans thought it was very useful. Okay, uh, and that's it. And I believe American Samoa is like the first part of the world that goes into the New Year's or something i can't remember was a samoa or american samoa that has the new year's the first out of out of any place in the world either way let's find out more about samoa if polynesia was a family samoa would be kind of like the kingpin great grandfather technically every samoan is considered royalty but it all comes down to how good of a royal can you be i, I mean sure if you got ties to the Tupu, it helps but anything is up for grabs in ofono omatai if your falupenga is on point and once you got the tama a Ainga title you can secure a spot as the ola ao ola malo yeah, but uh, I'm, I'm a Does that count? This is going to be a fun episode. I love the Pacific Island nations because they are some of the least studied places on Earth with some of the most vibrant stories and traditions. Also, yes, we it's did a have a social media campaign country. to try and get Dwayne The Rock Johnson in this episode. Art and oh, yeah. I actually kind of went He's up to his management office. Uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, I believe his father, who was a wrestler as well, was um, African-American and his mother was Samoan and he is... Yeah, technically part Samoan is so interesting. From Beverly Hills to see if we could reach out to him. Yeah, so we showed up at his management office and it was kind of awkward. They kind of looked at us like we're like from outer space or something like that. Yeah, we got told, we got rejected we so got hard. We got rejected so bad. Hey, Dwayne, like, hit me up. the whole coronavirus we'll thing together. happened, uh, so uh, we probably wouldn't have been able to film with him anyway, so. Right. We <laughs> overshot the runway too much on this. We're worthless. Anyway, in compliance with social distancing practices, Imagine if they got obviously the Caleb and Jillian live in my house, so they're cool with being in these episodes. Art is one of my closest neighbors. We wa live within walking distance, so Art's gonna be in these episodes too. And Just his mom makes really good chicken soup, so it's literally the only reason why I come over here. And uh, we will have occasional guest stars, but only one at a time, Keith, Noah, and Hannah. That's how this is gonna work out. All right, anyway, let's uh, jump into the episode. Samoa. I kind of like how he did the, these episodes. You in can't this, like, have room. Polynesia it's without starting and branching out from Samoa. All the Polynesian cousins sailed their ships out from Samoa at one point. And let's see where that point is on the map. So are, is Samoa like the epicenter or like where the ethnogenesis of the Polynesian people? Well, like, can that be true? Because Samoa is out there in the ocean. So they would have somebody would have to have uh, paddled a ship all the way down to Samoa. I don't know. But maybe, you know, their great great ancestors before they were known as Polynesians came there first and then made the Polynesian culture. This is known as ethnogenesis, the birth of a people group. Uh, when we consider a people group different enough to be their own, you know, people group. So they all came from Samoa. Interesting. Uh, I didn't watch Moana, so uh, it's like uh, one of the most well-known uh, movies out there in, when it comes to uh, Polynesian culture. Though I believe it was Tinkley, Tinkley, it's all, obviously it's a made-up movie, but uh, but it was based around Hawaii, I think. And, and like Samoa and other uh, Polynesian uh, 
areas. So th that's a very they're a very interesting people group because Polynesians figured out how to do deep sea navigation even before the um, the Europeans did. So that's interesting because usually they would just uh, stick to the coasts nearby. They wouldn't go go out into the deep ocean because it was the deep deep down dark deep down. If you know what I mean. No, anybody watch Jack Septicai? No, never mind. <laughs> uh, I'm just making a fool of myself. But um, yeah. Uh, though, albeit the Pacific uh, Ocean is more Pacific, it's calmer, so they had an easier time, I think. The country is located in Oceania in the Pacific Ocean, specifically in the largest subregion known as Polynesia, shaped like a triangle starting in New Zealand, going up to Hawaii, and ending in Easter Island. Polynesia has over a thousand islands and archipelagos straddling millions of square kilometers of ocean territory. Easter Samoa, Island, Timoshi. though, is located about halfway between New Zealand and Hawaii, sandwiched between their cousins Tuvalu and Tonga. Now, keep in mind, the independent nation of Samoa is different from the U.S. overseas territory yeah, of right American there. Samoa, which sits at the shortest distance less than 100 miles or 160 kilometers away. Keep in mind though, the most absolutely mind-boggling thing between these islands is that they are literally divided by the international dateline, which means they share the same time of day, but are exactly 24 hours apart, with American Samoa perpetually living in yesterday land and Samoa in tomorrow land. Technically, you can go to the future or past within a quick 35 minute flight between them. This is kind of why people typically buy two one-way tickets instead of a round-trip package when traveling between the two islands. It's like... Wow, American Samoa was pretty cool, but I think I'll just take one of those 35 minute flights over to the country of Samoa. When will I arrive? In just over 24 hours. Wait, what? How is that even possible? <laughs> well, when will I return? Yesterday. Yeah, it can be a nightmare if you've never done it before. In any case, the country is made up of two main <laughs> islands that make up about 99% of the landmass, Upolu, where about 75% of the population lives, and Savai'i, which has the remaining 25%. In addition, there are other smaller islands and rocks, such as Manono and Apolima in the Apolima Strait, the four Alepata Islands in the east off the coast of Opolu, Nu'utele, Nu'uala, Fanuatapu, and Namua, and finally, small little in the south just by the town of Putasi. Out of these islands, the country is divided divided into 11 Itumalo, or political districts, which are actually tied into historical Samoan communities that predate European contact. And the capital of the country, Apia, is located on the north side of Opolu Island. The country has one main international airport, Faleolo International. Otherwise, the country has three other regional airports on Savai, whereas Upolu has this extra one, but it was closed in 2019, but it might reopen. The locals are always arguing about it. From there, each island has a ring road that goes around the coasts and ferry services services operate between the islands daily, as well as ferries and flights between them and the U.S. territory of American Samoa. Keep in mind, all together, Samoa and American Samoa are collectively just called the Samoan Islands. However, sometimes to make the distinction, you might hear the titles Western Samoa for Samoa and American Samoa or East Samoa for the U.S. territory it was known of as Western Samoa. Samoa. Yeah, in 2011, they actually moved the country's date ahead one day and skipped December 30th. This was actually done to kind of boost their trade relations with New Zealand and Australia. Australia. It was Mixed. like, hey, New Zealand, it's Friday. Let's do some export deals. Oh, sorry, man. Even though you're like one longitude length away, it's Saturday here and our offices are closed on weekends, man. Oh, sh all right, look, man, this is ridiculous. This whole you being in yesterday thing is kind of stupid. Just switch it up and join our side. Eh, you're right. Hey, American Samoa. No, nah, I'm good. Fun fact, each Itumalo actually kind of has their own constitution called a Fa'ava'e, based on the order of each district's falupenga. What is a falupenga? Basically, it's like a special greeting that each of the district chiefs have to memorize when they go and visit another district chief. So it's like a passcode or something. No, it's a formal greeting acknowledging the history and lineage of the village and introducing yourself based off of your lineage and history. And it's all spoken in proper Samoan. So it's like a Shakespearean greeting. Eh, kind of? You have to be very eloquent if you're going to be one of the orator chiefs. For example, like this. Anyway, if you decide yes, to visit some to top level spots that conditions. you guys, the Samoan geography suggested I mention in this episode, include the Market or Maketifu, the Samoan Cultural Village, the Robert Louis Stevenson Museum, the EFKS Museum of Fine Arts, the Falea Lupo Ruins, Mosul's Footprint, the Salea Ula Lava Field footprint. Ruins, the largest fale at the University of Samoa, the ancient like star took mound a ship. of Monono Island, it the House of Rock, down. the Vanya Taole Alo Gallery, the Government House, there are many churches and places of worship like these, and 
there are so many natural spots and so many waterfalls. The most famous waterfall probably being Papapapaitai Falls. And there's so many caves as well, like the Dwarfs Caves and the Piula Cave Pools. The most famous notable spot in Landmark though would probably be the Pule Mele Pyramid Mound. Also keep in mind, they do have a they lot have of pyramids? amazing beaches, but almost none of them are public because they are owned by families or villages. So you'll have to pay a little fee to get on the beach. But anyway, speaking of beaches and natural landscape, now let's be Where real. The when you're in the middle of the ocean alone, <laughs> That's what I think about. isolated, every little bit of land when matters. I think Pacific Samoa, Island nations. they got kind of the jackpot. First of all, Samoa lies on the Pacific Plate, right at the top of the Tonga Trench, part of a larger, highly volcanic area known as the Ring of Fire that circumvents the That's fringes of the entire Pacific Ocean. The volcanic activity is essentially what formed the islands, as it lies on the Samoa hotspot, one of many noted magma plume upwellings that can be found scattered throughout the oceans of the world. Only one volcano is classified as active. Mount Matavanu on Savai Island, which last erupted for six years continuously between 1905 and 1911. It formed about 40 square miles or 100 square kilometers of new land it's in the form of a lava field on the north side. The tallest peak of the country, though, is Mount Silisili, which means highest, which is also located on Savai and is a dormant stratovolcano. From here, the two longest rivers, the Vaimali and Maliolio rivers, flow downward the from the central Savai mountain spine. The largest inland body of fresh water, however, is actually Lake Manoto'o, a small crater. Crater Lake found on the top of a hill on Upolu Island, just south of the capital. As an equatorial nation, they fall within the monsoon climate zone, where temperatures are consistently warm almost year-round, and the rainy season lasts between November and April. Occasionally, they might find themselves in the past of tropical storms or cyclones as well. Another cool thing is that Samoa was kind suck. of volcanically formed, a little different from all the other Polynesian islands. The distinct lava flow on the sides of Savai Island were carved by strong waves, creating a complex underground cave system that eventually tunneled up upwards to the surface, which is where you get the famous alofaga or taga oh, blowholes. Cool. <laughs> These water jets are created by pressure that flows into the tunnels from the ocean. Sometimes people like putting coconuts on these water jets and then <laughs> blasting them upwards. Now, as a tropical That's Polynesian like nation, fun. of course, yes, Samoa is very lush. Knowing my meaning, luck, about a fifth of the, the land coconut is arable, would smack about me two in thirds the of the country are either employed or involved in agriculture. Agricultural products and fishing in themselves make up about 90% of exports, whereas the service sector employs about half of the workforce, mostly in tourism and hospitality, which make up about a quarter of their GDP. Nearly a quarter million people travel to Samoa and visit every single year. And the number has actually been growing quite a bit in the past few years as Polynesian travel publicity has skyrocketed, you know, with the help of notable Polynesian based movies and films and stars <laughs> highlighting their heritage. I mean, Hobbs and Shaw, dang, Mr. Rock, I will never forget that Uso battle scene or the helicopter car chain thing. That's Samoa. In addition, Samoa is known for having a wide array of unique yeah, the rock from species. American and with Samoa? that, it's time for our heritage. animal correspondent, Samoa, Gary Harlow, just to step in. Jillian. Hey guys. Oh. Um, Caleb's, I mean, Gary Harlow's not here right now. He's actually deworming a, a blue uh, elephant, but um. Uh, we need what? someone to do this though. Like many other islands of the Pacific, Samoa doesn't have any endemic mammal species, the only true ones being bats and Polynesian rodents. Pigs, dogs, and cats are all over, but were introduced to the islands later by people. Otherwise, the country is loaded with reptiles like the native Samoan skink, the Polynesian gecko, and the Pacific boa. Heaps of marine species like parrotfish, surgeonfish, yellowfin tuna, and whales, and birds are everywhere. Over 80% are endemic and found nowhere else on Earth, like the Samoan flycatcher, the mao, Fantail, and the national animal, the Manumea, or tooth-billed pigeon. And that's it for me. Oh. Bye. Yay. Oh, oh. And now we finish off this segment as we always do. Food. Here are some of the top notable dishes of Samoa that you guys, the Samoan geography, suggested I mention. Fai Eleni, Palusami, Faali Fu Fai, Ota Ia, Sua Ia, Faausi, Kopai, Pani Popo, Pani Keke, Keke Pua'a, Keke Saina, Sua Fai. And very often at celebrations or occasions or even just on Sundays, you'll see the umus happening all the time. Yeah, Samoans are incredibly communal people. They take filial piety and ancestor veneration to a whole new level. And with that, that brings us to... 
Now, when it comes to Samoa, you kind of have to know Fa'a Samoa or the Samoan way. Every true Samoan knows about this oh and in some God, way, shape, so or form, ripped. to some degree, it affects their life. Everything you are and have from land to water to birthright are rooted back to the start. It's hard it's to probably understand, all the we'll explain oil. in a bit. <laughs> but first, Samoa has about 200,000 people and is the country with the highest population of native Polynesians in the world. And there are actually even more Samoans living abroad than there are in Samoa at about 600,000 globally. The country is made up mm -hmm. primarily of native Samoan people, a Polynesian group at about 92% of the population. About 7% are Uranesians, whom are people that are mixed with European and Islander ancestry, in this case mostly half Samoan people. And the remainder of the population is mostly white and East Asian, coming from countries like South Korea and China. They use the Tala as their currency, they use the Type I plug outlet, and they drive on the left side of the road. The main official Thanks, language British. of the country, of course, is Samoan. It is the most prominently spoken Polynesian language in the world. And after that, English is co-official. Again, they have a history with the British and New Zealanders, blah, blah, blah. Believe it or not, if World War I did not happen, Samoa actually might have been speaking German today. In any case, back to the confusing German's lineage thing. A There's a saying islands. in Samoan, Ole ala ile pule, ole tautua, which means the path to leadership is through service. Samoa has a very unique system that fuses both modern and traditional ruling systems. Today, their government is classified as a parliamentary republic. However, it takes strongly into account the traditional fa'amatai system. What is the fa'amatai system? <laughs> well, it's actually pretty simple, see? It all starts out with the four original Paramount Chieftain Dynasty families that created the nation known as a Tama Ainga. There's also a fifth one for American Samoa, but technically that one doesn't count. Keep in mind, the head of state or ceremonial president or the Ole Ao Ole Malo always has one or more of these titles in his name. From these four dynasties, the 16 royal families or the Ainga Tupu were created. They were the ones that originally ruled the Itumalo. From there, the towns and villages have a Matai, which means chief. They meet in a Fono o Matai or council of other chiefs. You can be a regular Matai or a Matai Sili, which means high level chief. The chiefs come in two forms, the Ali'i or head chief and the Tulafale or orator chief, who does all the talking, debating and announcing. Once you are Lots a Matai, you are generally expected to hold the title until you die. On rare occasions, will they cede the title? Keep in mind, off to the sides, there might also be a Pule Nu'u, a lower level assistant who helps facilitate the Matai duties. From there, you have a Taupo, a chief's daughter or female relative, usually from the Ali'i. She holds an important role in preparing the Ava ceremony for the so Matai nepotism. event. Sometimes a male or Manaya can hold this role too, but often it is female. If a Matai dies or is somehow unable to hold the title and it becomes available, everyone in the immediate family is a Suli or candidate heir to the Matai title. And a series of speeches or concessions begin to find who will become the next Matai. Both men and women can fill the role. However, statistically, about 90% of Matai have been men and about 10% have been female. From there, you have the unranked plain village people or the Tangatanu or the Taule Alea, usually made up of younger people or people uninterested in holding traditional titles. See? Simple. Also keep in mind, yeah, the Ava yeah. ceremony is incredibly <laughs> important to Samoan culture. It's used for all occasions, but especially for the Matai title bestowing ceremonies. Like okay, I'm surprised you didn't mention Copra yet. Um, when reading about Samoa, I noticed that was one of their ma main exports, as a matter of fact. Uh, Copra, for those who don't know, is dried coconut meat, and they take that dried coconut meat uh, to make coconut oil oil which like i said bodybuilders really like uh it's good oil i guess and uh yeah that's about it <laughs> Surprised you didn't mention that though. Like when a new Matai becomes a Matai. The bitter drink is prepared by people called the Aumaga using a Tanoa bowl and wringing out the roots of the mildly psychoactive Kava plant. If you see this, then y'all know that some serious is going on. Taking all of that into account, you can probably see by now that That's Samoa how many is religions were born. in maintaining traditional Hallucinogenic culture. substances. Faith-wise, Samoa is pretty religious. About 98% of the population is Christian, the largest groups being Protestant-based. And often you might even find yourself in the middle of a prayer session if you do just be respectful tone it down a little bit or you can even participate if you want traditionally though their ancestors followed a form of polynesian mythology that had numerous deities and spirits called atua and aitu interestingly enough statistically polynesia is one of the few areas on earth which has a birth rate of males that is higher than that of females today the ratio sits at around 1.07 to 1 in samoa anyway the traditional house is called a fale, some men are going to be without thick, females thatch, roof gazebo type of structure with no walls but blinds or nets can be draped down on the sides in between the columns holding up the roof. I mean, the weather is almost warm consistently throughout the year, so some ones didn't really have to worry about insulation. Fine mats called toga are probably the most prized artifact toga, of the country. Toga, They're used in all toga. occasions. They're given away as oh, gifts at weddings toga. and ceremonies and so on. They're used for everything, even when you want to seek forgiveness from someone that you've wronged. It's actually even a tradition for them to cover themselves in a toga outside of the person's house with their extended family members as a sign of atonement. Often you will see people wearing 
wearing lava lava cloth. It's the national cloth of the country, worn both by men and women. Usually men will just drape it around their waists. Women will make it into a body wrap dress. During celebrations, ceremonies, whatever, you might often find men doing the Fa'a Taupati slap dance and the slower, more poised Siva dance by women. Speaking of which, they have a ton of cool festivals like the Fire Knife Festival, the Faltasi Outrigger Canoe Competition, the Tafasila Fa'i Festival, I'm going to say they seem like in much better shape than in, than their um, cousins in the other Pacific Island nations because uh, you, you would notice like in places like Nauru, the obesity rate is obscenely high and the rates of obese, of uh, type 2 diabetes is also very high. And I was told it was because uh, they started importing a lot of uh, canned food, like of poor quality from other nations. Which is unfortunate of course if you eat a lot of that stuff it's not going to be good so uh, surprisingly surprisingly Samoa is looking better and he hasn't mentioned anything yet about uh, obesity so I'm going to assume it, the situation is slightly better there at least uh, well the people here look skinnier I suppose so um, what they really need to do is get whatever agriculture and fishing they they can back online to make sure that people are healthier festival and the biggest one Tewila, held around september with the biggest activities performances and cuisine displays and then you get to the traditional tattoos made out of shark's teeth and soot and i'm getting kind of tired of all this actually you know what art just just host host this Glad segment see, uh, are they permanent second. like you're, you're, the last, you're the last resort so yeah the last resort now across polynesia you'll see tattoos everywhere as they are a universal rite of passage but each island and country has their own unique way of doing it unlike their cousins the maori samoan tattoos don't have <sighs> spirals or curves, they're typically straight, geometric, and extend from the ribcage to the knees. Men's tattoos are called pea, and women's are called malu. And for women, the tattoos only extend from the thighs to the knees. It's a well-known fact that Samoans are famous for their athletic prowess. Historically, the Polynesian men were trained to be big and strong for warfare and competition. I mean, they even awesome. had some really cool weaponry. They had an impressive assortment. Yeah, some of their weaponry actually used uh, shark teeth, so ouch. Though probably having a, you know, a Japanese katana or European sword would probably be more effective. Clubs, axes, but still, it's pretty cool. Mason, Some more like puffer fish as helmets. Did I just say dagger? <laughs> Daggers! Anthropologists speculate that in addition to the possible genetic predisposition to gain more muscle, the abundance of available sustenance year-round on the island or seas around them allowed them to eat more and gain more mass. On the downside, Samoa and other Pacific oh, Islands have some mind. of the highest <laughs> rates of obesity as well as other health-related problems. In any case, Samoan and Pacific Islander men are top contenders for recruiting seasons in rugby. You had my hopes up, Samoa. <laughs> in the NFL, a Samoan male is often somewhere around 40 to 60 times more likely to be recruited against a non-Samoan counterparts, especially for a lineman or linebacker position because they are freaking huge. Yeah, I don't understand NFL rugby, so. Huge people. Or American you football. football too, Art, didn't you? I did play football. Yes, I did. I might be considered big, but those guys are like really big. Uh, Speaking of big, Keith, he's been <laughs> eating a sandwich. <laughs> jealous? You're jealous of this <laughs> I've never Damn, spanked Keith. a belly. Fucking sexy beast. <laughs> Speaking of Keith, you're right there. <laughs> oh, by the way, it's my buddy's band, Protein Collective. They're sick. Go check them out. Due to fair use laws, don't sue us or placement or whatever. Just don't sue them. As a Polynesian country, Samoa is heavily rooted in traditional sound. As a country with well, no seems formal high as, writing high system, fuck they in this one. heavily on oral tradition by documenting incidents through song and dance. Samoans love singing Check Out the Samoan high note challenge. Those videos are hilarious. <laughs> you got it. Much of the music can yeah, be performed <laughs> with traditional instruments like these. And maybe some of these. Hey, Otherwise, what? today, modern genres like Samoan style RB, poly reggae, and like God, jazz have huge. made waves of popularity amongst the younger generation. Well, since I don't have a bass today, I guess I can uke my way on out of here. <laughs> 
Thank you, Keith. And now it's time for the very condensed history segment of this episode. In the quickest way I can put it, Austronesians sail in and settle Samoa. The four Tama Aiga chieftain dynasties begin. Austronesian. The legendary warrior Oops. queen Nanafuna starts the Matai system. The Ainga Tupu royal family is established. More of Polynesia is settled. Samoa is taken over and breaks in free the from the Tui Tonga Empire. First European contact from British and Dutch in the 1700s. Missionaries I think it was bring Dutch Christianity. British. Americans, British, and Germans all claim parts of Samoa. First Samoan civil war fought between rival Samoan factions. Second Samoan civil war. Germany takes over for 14 years. The East Islands become a U.S. territory. Mao movement for independence. World War One. The U.K. creeps in, kicks out the Germans. Samoa becomes a territory of New Zealand. Spanish flu kills off a fifth of the population. 1962 independence. New Zealand's Ouch. Helen Clark issues a formal apology for the incidents of the 20th century. Samoa's last king dies at age 95. Samoa switches time zones. Hobbs and Shaw save the world from evil. And here we are today. <laughs> Some of the top notable people like from Samoa canon. that you guys suggested I mention in this episode history. include historical figures like Maliatoa Laupepa, Maliatoa Tanu Mafili the first, Luaki Namulau Ulu Mamoe, Maliatoa Tanu Mafili the second, as well as Cardinal Pio Taufinu U. Tons of professional athletes like these, lots of boxers like these, weightlifters, rugby players, American football players, wrestlers, people in the business, arts and entertainment <laughs> area <laughs> like KJ Apa, Robbie Magasiva, Jay Lagaaya, Beula Koale, Urale, Nick Afoa, Paris Gobel, Albert Went, Aggie Gray, of course, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And of course, there are so many famous musicians and artists and bands like these. I'm just going to put a bunch of them up on the screen. And finally, just some miscellaneous ones. Latafale Auva'a, Amy Maslin Miller, Chief Cielu Avea, and the Circus of Samoa. Yeah, for such a small island nation, Samoans have really stuck themselves out as Samoan special. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, off to the last segment, the friend zone. Tonga, now, best friend. Ocean Tonga. Island nations have always kind of been an interesting place when it comes to diplomacy because everything is so spread apart that you kind of need anyone within the vast open void to lean on. That being said, Samoa does have quite a few contacts in their Rolodex. Although Fiji is classified as Melanesian, their close proximity to Samoa helps them act as like a bridge between Melanesia and Polynesia. Business, travel, and trade are not only huge between them, both countries kind of piggyback off of each other as well. Fijians even have their own version of the Ava ceremony, and they even created their own haka chant at sport events like the Maori of New Zealand. Tonga is kind of like the best rival cousin. I mean a long time ago they did kind of take over Samoa in the Tui Tonga Empire and there were numerous battles and wars between them but oh, that yeah. was like <laughs> so long ago and everybody's forgotten about it. The two are close now. The countries and islands that culturally identify closest to Samoa though would time probably be their immediate all. siblings Tuvalu and the three association states of New Zealand Tokelau, Cook Islands, and Niue. Specifically Tuvalu and Tokelau have the closest languages to Samoan. Some even say it's just a dialect. They all have very very similar customs and cultures as well as family lineages as their ancestors fled to nearby islands, intermarried, and kept in touch pretty well. New Zealand is their biggest business partner and specifically plays a huge role in Samoa's affairs. And in 1962, they signed a treaty of friendship after independence. New Zealand has the largest Samoan population outside of Samoa. They are the largest hub of travel to Samoa. They are in charge of their military protection. And Samoa can request channels of communication to international organizations through New Zealand. When it comes to the ones closest to them though, Samoans will probably say the American territory of Samoa. Essentially, they are the same people. Sure, one speaks with a Kiwi accent, the other speaks with an American. One drives on the right side, the other on the left. One plays rugby, the other one plays American football. But otherwise, same people. American Samoa actually the had the chance to rugby. join them back in 1966 when the UN football. threw out the option. The same but surprisingly, they voted to stay as a territory of the US and take on US benefits. Nonetheless, both of them follow the same Fa'a Samoa system of life. They both have the Matai and Fa'a culture and overall they get each other the best. In conclusion, you cannot okay. <laughs> have Polynesia without Samoa. Everything between New Zealand, Hawaii, and Easter Island starts here. They are masters of the ocean and if you are lucky to meet a Samoan, technically you could address them by saying your majesty. Stay tuned, San Marino is coming up next. Yeah, San Marino. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Oops. 
All right. Well, anyway, let's just. Uh, hey everybody, welcome back to Flag Slash Fan Friday. Hope you like the. Oh, it has a Southern Walk Cross episode. on it, so the I The best noticed. place in the world to travel back or forwards in time. That was an interesting fact, wasn't it? Oh, and what's that? You can totally get a Geography Now T-shirt or mug or a gym sack at geographynow.com. I already have all those. Can. Well, oh not gosh, the gym you sack. You can't stop talking about it. Wow. Anyway, as you know, this is the part where I talk about the small mistakes we made in the episode or the things that didn't quite make it into the episode. For one, I accidentally said that Samoa has the highest population of Polynesians in the world. That's wrong. I don't. Wow. I messed that up. Sorry. Pretty sure I meant to say second. And I also meant to mention that Samoa was the first country in Polynesia to reestablish independence in the 20th century. In the famous people section, we accidentally got the wrong name for Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns, man, that guy's cool too. In the famous places section, we got the wrong picture of the Pule Mele Mounds. I'm sorry. I believe that's actually a temple in Indonesia. This is the real picture of Pule Mele. In the political animation, the audio got cut off. You didn't hear my voice saying Nu'usafe Island. Some facts I forgot to mention. They actually started driving on the left side of the road in 2009, again as a shift to make relations closer with New Zealand and Australia. I also forgot to mention Siapo It's not like you can drive very, uh, to New Zealand. Cloth. And another thing, we did mention how Polynesian countries typically have higher birth rates of males per females. And uh, one thing I forgot to mention is the fafafine. In some Polynesian cultures, some families have too many boys. So it is deemed acceptable to raise one of the boys as what are typically associated with female roles in the family household. The boy can reject the role if he doesn't doesn't want to, but some of them do accept it and they live their lives as fafafine. Keep in mind, this is way more complex than just a gender identity thing or like a sexual orientation thing. It is just a fafafine family role thing. I was not mostly. expecting that. So yeah, those are some of the extra <laughs> things that didn't quite make it in the episode. In the meantime, we got to talk about what? the flag and stuff. So without further ado. <laughs> Ah, Samoa. This was a really fun episode to film. I want to give a huge thanks to you guys, the Samoan Geography Peeps, for helping with this episode, especially Geography Henry. He actually sent a whole video explaining the Fa'amatai system. Here's some of the clip. The village system was born and overseeing them collectively were the Matai. Roles within the Matai start off with the Ali'i, or the senior most member with the highest title. And it just kind of goes on. Yeah, well, the whole traditional ruling good. system is just, I, it's complex. Anyway, let's move on to the flag. The flag of Samoa is a red banner with a blue canton in the upper horn side and five stars in it. The stars within the blue canton are the Southern Cross, the most notable and famous constellation found in the Southern Hemisphere. Very simple. The blue stands for freedom and the red stands for courage. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Simple. Anyway, also keep in mind Samoa was, was also expecting known as blood. Western Samoa before they changed up the name. Prior to that, they were under New Zealand as the Western Samoa Territory. Prior to that, they were under the Germans as German Samoa. And then prior to that, they had a bunch of Samoan Kingdom flags, which looked like these. Okay, for a second there, I thought they were part of like the Ottoman Empire or something. Or they were considering Gislam or something. Or am I missing something? <laughs> So anyway, yeah, uh, moving on to the coat of arms. The coat of arms of Samoa is a shield with a southern cross depicted on the bottom two thirds, and the top third has a C with a coconut tree. The background was actually inspired off the UN's badge a with C. the gridded circles to depict the world with longitude and latitude lines and olive branches on the sides to symbolize peace. On the top lies the Christian cross, as Samoa is predominantly Christian, and at the bottom lies the state motto Fa'ava'e ile atua Samoa, which means God be the foundation of Samoa. And prior to this, they had four other coat of arms, an older version of this one, and three others pertaining to the former <laughs> like colonies the of German, New Zealand uh, and Germany and uh, German seagulls squished. Thing. This was very <laughs> like easy it's done short. on Photoshop. Samoa's, it's not complicated. It's it's you get what you get with Samoa. They're 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 very simple, happy people. So anyway, as Fair usual, uh, this is the shortest part of the episode, which means we move on to the longest part of this episode. Geography. Nope, this is the end of the episode. This is the shortest part of the episode, as a matter of fact, for me at least. But yeah, that was Samoa. I'll be moving on to do the rest of Geography Now. We're going to catch up very soon, so stay tuned. Uh, thank you all for watching, and as always, take care.